Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, thanks for tuning in and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. So, I've been looking around on YouTube what everyone else is doing and I've seen that there seems to be a lot of sort of little how-to videos around at the moment and, and general tips and, and this and, and they seem to be getting a lot of interest. So, maybe at the moment there's a lot of new people coming into the hobby that need these videos for tips. So, I'm in the middle of working on this Airfix 124 scale Supermarine Spitfire and um, lovely kit it is and I've got lots and lots of little sort of sub assemblies built and stuff and I thought I'd do a video about filling because it, lately I have changed my way of doing filling and stuff from I've always used Mr. Servicer and now I've started using Superglue so I thought I'd do a, a sort of back to basics filling seams okay um, and I thought I'd show you the, 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 the products that I use, the products that are available, um, different ways of using them, and which ones I prefer. Now, which ones I prefer doesn't matter, it's just a matter of taste, um, but I feel there are certain products that are more applicable, applicable? applicable to certain situations than others. So, if we first of all look at the sort of seams we want to fill, we can then look at the different products we've got and which ones are suitable and then we can actually use those products and then we can wait for those products to dry and then look at the post treatment to hide or whatever we're going to do with the seam. So if we start off with these first, these are the propeller blades from the 124th Airfix Spitfire and as you can see, I'll show you on the instructions, Instead of just having a one piece molded propeller blade, they've got a blade with a separate segment going in the back. And the reason they've done this, if you look at most of your model kits, especially your bigger ones with 48 scale and stuff, they tend to always get sink marks here because the, the propeller blade itself is very thin. Okay, and then as it gets down here, it's really thick. So you tend to get a sink mark down here. So what they've done, they've cleverly made this piece separate so you fit it in. The problem is you glue it in and it fits lovely along the leading edge and everything, as you can see there. But around here, you've got a seam that you need to fill. So, and there is actually a, if I run my fingernail, you can hear there is actually a gap. So that is something we need to fill. And there are many, many different ways we can fill that. And uh, we will look at that in a second. Another one you've got is here. This is the um, header tank from the engine. And this is two parts, and I'll use a pointer. The actual, this is a mould seam you can see over here, but this is the joint where the two point parts are joined together, okay? So that's another seam, but you can also see that in this in this situation, we've got a step there that we need to sand out. So we're going to sand that step out as well after we've filled it. And then here we've got the heat exchanger or the charge cooler for the supercharger. And this is made up of one two, three, four, five parts. It's made up of five flat parts. Well, that's hardly flat, is it? But it's made up of five flat parts. So we've got seams all the way around there. But as you can see, the whole thing is covered in detail. Okay, so we need to fill those seams, but we don't want to get getting in there with sandpaper and stuff and sanding it because then we'll lose all the detail. So we'll look at how we do those. The other thing we can look at is here on the side of this oil tank that goes below the engine. You can see I've already put some Mr. Surfacer in there. How are we going to remove the Mr. Surfacer without damaging all this lovely rivet detail? Here, this is just a simple two parts of the gearbox going together. Simple seam to sand out there. And then in here we have the wing structure, which has been talked about a lot in my videos. And here we've got... This is the lower wing structure with the wheel bays and the gun bays and everything. And we've got little gaps and bits and pieces going around. Now I've already done these wing bays, but I'm going to use bits around here that aren't going to be seen on the finished model. Just to show you the way I'm doing that and how we get around getting rid of those gaps. So if we go back to basics and we look first, of all, we'll go back to basics and look at these first. OK, so we've got four propeller blades here. Now there are all sorts of different ways of filling a gap. You can use filler. So this is Tamiya putty, basic type. I believe it's quite hard to come by at the moment, uh, but it tends to sort of come and go. But this is just a normal Tamiya putty. You can use green stuff. You can use all sorts of different squadron put putties and everything. The Tamiya putty is really good. 
Um, I like to use these solvent based putties because they tend to bite into the plastic whereas water based putties like this one here this is the Viejo one you can also get um, I think it's called uh, Plastic Magic is it? I'm not sure but uh, it's by that same company and they do like a, a plastic filler um, I think Plastic Magic is actually the glue isn't it the trouble with them is they I, I describe that the best way I think to describe them they're like um, tile grout when you when you do or, or like fine surface filler for your house and they're they're water based so the, the beauty of them is you can rub them off with water before they dry even after they're dry um, but they don't actually bite into the plastic they're very much like the difference of using a solvent paint on plastic as a as a burst, uh, water paint a solvent paint will bite into the surface and stick whereas a water based paint obviously will just the best way to describe it is if you can imagine painting a window if you painted a window with water-based paint you could rub the paint off with your fingernail quite easily because it won't stick to it because it's so smooth whereas if you painted the window with a solvent paint it would be much harder to remove because it sticks so much better to the surface it doesn't etch in like it does the plastic but it just sticks better and it's the same with these two that will stick to the plastic a lot better than that will you've also got this one here mr hobby white putty mr white putty um it does exactly the same job as the tamia obviously it's white this one is gray i prefer the tamia putty to this one this one I find is, it's hard to describe. This dries off very, very hard. And when you sand it, it just sands off and forms like a powder, which I'll show you. Whereas this one, I think it tends to be a bit kind of, a bit more like a nylon. If you think of that as like a hard plastic, that's more like a nylon. It's weird. And um, I much prefer the Tamiya putty. So if, the, if I was going to buy one putty out of these three, I would buy that one, the Tamiya putty. The other way we can fill it is with super glue. Now I've got some black ones here. You can use any super glue, but I would thoroughly recommend these two. This is um, black slow dry MIG ammo. Um, and this one is black Fexi 5 CA. And this is black thin. And the beauty of these being black for any application using them in, I guess, other than black plastic, you can see where it is. And it's like you can see here. OK, I've put super glue around these wheel bays to get them to sit. I've not used it as a filler, but you can see exactly where the glue has gone. So if I wanted a nice tidy joint, I could come along afterwards with a um, cotton bud and just soak, get rid of the excess. Whereas with a clear glue, you can't always see where it is. And then when you prime, ship modelers, I know this a lot, you know, you fit all your little railings and your davits and all that. And then you prime it and you paint it. And you've got these little lumps of glue everywhere that you didn't see because they were clear. Whereas with these black glues, you can see where they go. And when you use them as a filler, even better, you can see that it's actually in there. And you can see like on these on these ejector pin marks where I've used it as a filler, you can see where it's all sanded flat. So you can see the surface is flat. There's going to be no divots or anything in it. Whereas if it's clear, it's very difficult to see. So I would thoroughly recommend these two. Black Slow Dry and Flexi 5 CA. They're both available from Premium Hobbies on, online. And if you use my code NMB10, you'll get 10% off. So that's another filler. And then the, the, the final one we're going to look at is this one here. This is Mr. Surfacer. Now, those who follow me regularly know I absolutely love this stuff. Um, Mr. Surfacer 1200, Mr. Surfacer 1000, Mr. Surfacer 500. So these are the basic cheaper three that you can get from uh, Mr. Hobby. Again, you can get all these from Premium Hobbies. So these are the basic ones you can use as a filler. You can thin them and spray them through your airbrush. Um, you can thin them with Mr. Color Leveling Thinners is what I like to use. You can use the Rapid Thinners, which is another one here. But I tend not to use Rapid Thinners because Leveling Thinners does exactly what it says on the pot. It allows the paint to settle and then level out. Rapid is all about speed, so it goes down if you've got a rough surface, particularly on a warm day, it'll just dry rough. So if you want a rough surface, then great. Um, so these are the Mr. Surfacer, as they're 500, 1000 and 1200. When you buy them new, this one is the thickest, this is the next, and this one is always the thinnest, the runniest. But I believe it's not just to do with that, I believe it's the pigmentation of it or whatever, whatever it is that's in there, 
the the balls of whatever it is that's giving it its filling capabilities. I believe they're bigger in this one than they are in this one. But I, I've thinned 500 and sprayed it and got exactly the same results thinning 1200 and spraying it. So I don't know. There's also one here now which has come out, Aqueous Surfacer. And I believe this can be mixed with water. I don't know. Um, the only advantage I found with this is it doesn't smell as bad. So, but, but the, I know the lid absolutely sticks solid if it's left shut for a couple of days. Um, but I haven't really used it in haste. because I don't really see the point other than the smell. It can't be removed with water once it's dry like this one can. But I don't know. So there's that one there, the Aqueous. And then you also have these as a whole range in all different colours. Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. These can also be used as a filler, okay? But they're they're designed, I think, as a surfacer, as like a primer. And you'll see me on my channel, I use this all the time, the black. I absolutely love it. I thin it with this again, and I spray it through my airbrush. But you'll also see me using it on the brush as a filler. But this is a standalone video, just covering doing seams. So I think the first one we'll look at is the Tamiya Putty. So you need a little tool to apply it. And what I've got here is a little sort of paint stirring thing. So I'm just going to get some of this putty off onto here. Okay. And then I'm going to push it into this joint. Like that. Okay, now I'm putting a lot on so that you can see it. I wouldn't normally put this much on. But I want you to be able to see it. And you must always make sure you, you are proud. If you can see the joint, don't, if you rub over, if you get this sort of thing, where you can see the joint underneath like that, you can see there, there's the joint here. You need to put some more filler on. Do you, you want it because it will shrink back as it dries. And that is one of the disadvantages of a lot of these products is the shrinkage. Okay, and also it's worth remembering when you're doing something like a fuselage, with a fuselage seam like this along the spine, or along the nose here or underneath. When you've glued it together, if you use Tammy Extra Thin or whatever, leave it for as long as you can before you start dealing with that seam. Because what will happen, you'll sand it back lovely and smooth. Then after a couple of days, the solvents will dry out of the extra thin that you've used to weld it all together. And then you'll get a line come back and it'll shrink and then a line will appear. So that's what you need to be very careful of, especially in areas like this where it's quite flat, you will see it shrink back. So what I've done with this, I've left this a couple of days and then I've put some um, some super glue in there and then it's just had a final coat of Mr. Surfacer and I'll leave that now and let it all shrink and do its thing. But uh, they will all shrink. So there's the Tamiya filler. You can see I've put a lot on. I've made a bit of a mess because I was too slow. Normally you need to be very, very fast, work very quickly because it dries so fast. But what we can do is just rub it off when it starts to dry. We can rub our finger over the top and remove the excess lumps. There you can see that's that one done. So it's quite messy, but it's there and it's ready to be sanded. Now I'm not going to use this one because I don't like it. Okay, uh, but I will show you this one in case you want to get some. But this is the Mr. Let's get a different uh, tool for this. There we go, same sort of thing. Just It's gone dry in the end. I need to get some fresh out. There we go. Where's my rag gone? I did have a rag here. Just rub it on there. Mr. Prepared as usual. So we'll just get some of this out. And you can see already it's it's like it's it's like a it's not like a filler paste like that one is. It's a it's very, very gooey. It's almost like a sort of a five-minute epoxy that's starting to go off, you know, like Haroldite or something. It's very, very gooey and I've put way too much on there. But I need you to be able to see what I'm doing. So there you go. So that's that on there. Okay, so that's your, that's your Mr. Putty. Or Mr. White Putty, should I say. Okay, so you can see there. So we've got the Tamiya there and we've got the Mr. Hobby there. We'll leave those to dry. I'll put that to one side. If you want to clean your tools off, if you get a drop of Tamiya Extra Thin, if, if, it, if it's dried, um, let me grab a cloth. One of the best ways to remove filler from your tools, because most of us use Tamiya Extra Thin as a glue. 
Okay, you can use tool cleaners and that, but Tamiya Extra Thin is the same thing. And you can rub that on there and on that side, and then wipe your tool off, and it'll come out lovely and clean. Okay, so that's why we're cleaning your tools off, even when it's dried on there. Right, so that's the two fillers. Now we'll go for some super glue. So I'm going to use this one here. This is the black. In fact, let's, let's use this one here. This is the black um, ammo mig. Okay, it's, it's from Mickey Meneth. Um, and it's, it's wonderful stuff. It's really, really good. You need to give it a good shake to get the colour in it because I think the colour settles at the bottom. You can see <laughs> it's all dried on the end of there. But we'll get some out. I use an upturned Pringles lid. It's the best thing. Now, one of the problems I find with this is it tends to be, it's almost like static. Uh, as you can see, we've got those, those drops coming off there. And when you use it, it kind of, you know, and I think there's static in the plastic or whatever, and it, it just springs off with it. So just be prepared for that. So anything that's near it, you don't want filler on, best mask it up. This here is an applicator. You can use cocktail sticks, which I'll, I'll use a cocktail stick for you, for you guys. But this is a proper super glue applicator. Okay, and they're called glue loopers. You can get them off of many different people. And it's just basically, it's a, it's a photo etched strip. Okay, this is an RB production one, which I don't think you can get anymore. It's just basically a photo etched strip that goes into an X-Acto type handle. Okay, and you hold that in there, tighten it down. And then that is your glue applicator. And the, you can see the kind of, on the end of it, you can see there's like a, a slot in it. A lot of people get, get a, a, a sewing needle and snap the end off. So you end up with half of the eye where the thread goes through. It gives you the same thing. And what it is, when you use that, when you pick it up, it picks up a blob of glue in that gap because the glue capillaries into that gap works really, really well. If you don't have one of those, you can use a cocktail stick, which is what I'm going to do here. OK, so I could just put this in here. And again, you want to build it up because what it will do, it will shrink back. And you can see that straight away, this is a much tidier joint. And you can see these little dots of black appearing everywhere. It's almost like static, but I don't think it is because I um, I went over a part I was doing with a stat an anti-static brush and it made no difference whatsoever. And other glues I use don't do it. Now, I haven't put any, any filler on the front edge of any of these because I don't think I need to. And plus, I only glued them together a couple of hours ago, so I'm going to leave them in case they want to shrink back where the solvents come out of the glue, like I was saying on that fuselage. So I'm not doing them yet, but just showing you here, this is just an exercise in how to fill a gap. So there you can see we've put the, the black super glue on the joint. And we're just going to leave it to dry. You can, if you want, spray it with an accelerator to make it go off quick. One of the biggest problems with doing that, using accelerators, makes the glue go very hard. And the problem with that is when you're using it as a filler, if the glue is harder than the plastic either side of it, it's very difficult to sand without ending up with a, a raised area where the glue is. So, And the reason I use a Pringles lid, you'll see many modellers will just put a piece of masking tape or something down here and they'll put a drop of glue on there. And then when you're modelling, you put your hand in it or you drop something straight into it. So I like to use a Pringles lid. It's got a coffee lid underneath it just so you can see it. And then I can put that to one side over there and it's out of the way and I know I'm not going to touch it so that's a little tip for you there and then finally for the last well not the, not the last bit we're going to use some Mr Surfacer so basically I'm going to use Mr Surfacer on all three of these parts okay now this I would my preferred option if I was doing this without making a video I would use that super glue in all three of these applications for doing ejector pin marks and everything I use super glue but for these parts, I'm going to use Mr. Surfacer 1 to show you how it works. I think I'll do. I'll use the 1000. No, I won't. I'll use the 1200. I know the 1200 that I've got dries quicker. So I take a brush. And if you notice, I haven't cleaned the brush out. See the end of this brush? The bristles are all hard. I never bother cleaning the brush out because when you put it in the Mr. Surfacer, again, you end up with, I can show you on here. Nice soft bristles that you can brush with. So washing out your brush when you've used Mr. Surfacer, and I would recommend dedicating a brush to Mr. Surfacer and don't use anything else. 
don't use that brush for anything else because it doesn't it doesn't miss the surface doesn't really do them any good so you can brush that on just like so and then we'll come underneath I'm not sure we need to do underneath really but we can just brush them in there just like that and just leave it to dry now if you notice I haven't bothered cleaning the seam up I haven't bothered sanding the sprue nibs off because you don't need to what's the point of sanding it all twice and risking losing the shape just there we go I've put that on really thick purposely because I know I've got quite a big gap there and I know it's going to shrink back in so if I put it on thick to start with it may mean I don't have to put a second coat on okay so that's that there I'm going to grab my cardboard box stand thing I made and just stand that there okay so that was the Mr. Surfacer 1200 I'll show you mine are all quite thick Mr. Surfacer goes thick with age okay it's worth remembering but you can see that this one is very thick indeed okay you can still I can turn that jar almost upside down and it's very thick indeed this one is is thinner okay this one is thinner and the thousand is in between the two now when you get them new the 1200 is probably about the consistency of Tamiya paint okay and that one is probably about the consistency of that one is now if you want to thin it just add some Mr. Color Leveling Thinners and it will thin out so we've got this Mr. Surfacer 500 you can see how thick it is really thick and all I'm going to do here is just brush it into there Okay, again, let it build up because you know it's going to shrink back. So that's that. That's that seam taken care of there. So now we've got Tamiya Putty, Mr. Hobby White, <clears throat> black CA glue, and we've got the Mr. Surfacer there, the 500. So we've got Mr. Surfacer 1200 on there, Mr. Surfacer 500 on there. I'm looking at this now, I can see straight away you can see already it's starting to shrink back and the seam is showing back it's best to just leave it so i'll come along now with the thousand and if you notice i'm putting the brush in all three because they're all compatible it doesn't really matter some will tell you oh no you shouldn't do that but it doesn't really matter okay so on here this is actually a lovely fit this all goes together pretty well the only bit that actually needs some attention is this part here so i'm just going to brush around this edge and make sure that the Mr. Surfacer goes into all these gaps. Okay, and I would not use anything other than Mr. Surfacer on a part like this, and the reason will become apparent very, very soon. And I can see that down here. We've got a bit of a gap there and there, so we're just going to put some Mr. Surfacer in there, and that's that done. Okay. Oh, the other one I was going to show you, that we used the 1200 for this. Let's get this out of the way. In this, in these machine gun chambers in the wings, where we've glued these ribs in, you get like a small gap or whatever all around the edge. And when you paint it, especially because they've got to be silver and silver makes everything really pop. If you're not sure of your surface and you want to check before you paint, if you spray it silver, the slightest hairline scratch will stick out like a sore thumb. Worth remembering. So you've got gaps all around here. So all I've done is put Mr. Service around them. So I'll use the 1200 again. And if you can imagine... For ease of sight if you can imagine this area here is going to be in a gun bay that we're going to see it's not it's underneath the cockpit we're not going to see it but I'm just using this to show you the method of getting rid of the gaps now you can see that down here there's a seam and we can see that seam what I'm going to do is get the Mr. Surfacer and brush it along now there's a hollow there where there's an ejector pin mark and I don't think all the Mr. Surfacer in the world will hide that but we can try can put a big puddle in there and then brush it along back here you can see there's a gap so we can go into there 
and you can see that as I'm going it's pulling it in so we may need to put another coat on okay I'm going to do the same on the other side you see there's a gap there we'll fill that in and then brush it down here and it doesn't matter how neat and tidy we are there we are so you can see now I've brushed that in it's gone down the edges it's gone into those seams drop more on there okay so if this was an area that you were going to see then you'd want to do this to get rid of that gap it could be an area where you want to leave a line again you put this in if you've got an uneven glue line there or something you want you want to leave a line like say on a seam like this if this was a separate part and you were putting this was glued onto the fuselage and it was a little bit uneven this line here I'm talking about okay you would put Mr. Servicer in there and then just go over the cotton bud in fact if you go back to my Stuka build I think you'll see me do it on there same here okay and then what we're going to do now is I'm going to go away for a couple of hours for you it'll be a couple of seconds and then I'm going to come back when all this is dry and I'll show you the different ways of getting it off okay and we're back so if you're thinking basically what a dirty scruffy old mat that is yes I use a dirty scruffy mat like this and if you're new to the hobby you might want to do the same dirty scruffy old mat like this for doing any painting filling anything like that because it's going to get ruined with super glues and fillers and stuff and a nice clean one for just building so you could drip Tammy Extra Thin on that, it won't matter, there's probably a drop there if you can see that. Um, but keep it nice and clean and then have this one for all your dirty stuff. So this is dirty stuff. So we are about two and a half, two or three quarter hours since I filmed the last part. I would have done it a lot quicker but the um, this one here takes forever to dry. So there we go, so we've got the Tamiya putty, the Mr. White putty, the black super glue and Mr. Surfacer. So. Um, and we've got that part there that we did that we're going to sand down and we've also got the wing over here and that's about that so these are the ones we really want to concentrate on here I've got a this is a flory skinny stick it's quite a coarse one and it's quite worn out so it's probably equivalent to about a 240 grit okay so it's, it's fairly coarse-ish but we need something fairly coarse-ish because when you're rubbing down fillers and stuff they just clog up straight away so I have a piece of denim, it's always handy, a piece of old jean material, it gets the bottom off an old pair of jeans. Have that handy on the side, in fact that could go in, it can go in the wash down and be cleaned out because you can see it's filthy. And what you can do then is wipe your sanding sticks clean on that. I often wipe them on my jeans, but I can't really show you, I, I can, perhaps if I zoom the camera out, I can show you, maybe you'll be able to see it in the bottom of the screen, but there is... There is the leg of my jeans where I keep wiping the sanding stick. It's actually worn through. So it's a habit you want to try and get out of if you can. Let's zoom you back in. There we go. So um, there we go. So have a piece of denim on the side to wipe your sanding sticks off. You can keep them clean. So if we start off here with the Mr. Syrup. Well, no, we do it the same way as we did it. We'll start off with the Tamiya filler. And as you can see, it hasn't shrunk back very much, but it has shrunk back. And I can sand this and it's fairly tough if you're doing a lot you want to get a mask on because of the dust and you can see how straight away it's clogging the sanding stick up so you just wipe it off on the denim like that and it comes back clean in fact what I'll do is I'll cut the end off we've got an old pair of cutters here I'll cut the end off so we've got a nice fresh fresh end okay and then you'll see what I mean so you can see it's got a tiny little bit in there which is picked up and built up but generally what happens with sanding sticks, they tend to clog up with fillers and Mr. Surfacer and stuff. So clear it out. I didn't show you before I cleared it out, did I? So you can see there, it's got all the filler and that built on it. Clean. So it's always good to have a bit of denim sat around. So I'm just gently sanding this 45 degrees to the join. If you've got 45 degrees, you can't go wrong. 
and also because it's like a corner you're 45 on both of them if I go that way I'm in line on that one and vice versa so 45 degrees and just I'm not pushing down on the sander at all I'm just letting the sander do the work and as you can see now we can come around this corner I'm only going to concentrate on this area here because it's not about how to get a nice finish it's about filling a gap so you can see here that it's slightly raised because now we can see the plastic panel if I can get it to focus you can see the plastic panel and the fillers below it and I can feel it stepped up so what we're going to do is just keep going until the filler so we can only see a line okay so that's that roughed out and then I'm going to get my 400 grit in finny sanding stick this is a zebra stick again available from premium hobbies are absolutely brilliant these things and because it's nice and flat I can just sand away and I know I'm not putting any undulations or anything in it if I use a sponge the sponge will conform to the shape that I'm sanding so you want something hard to break this break this down As you can see, we're getting there. If you haven't seen the build of the Spitfire, you're interested, go take a look. I filmed part five, I'm, I'm doing part six at the moment, um, and part three is up there to be watched. Now, this leading edge, I'm just going to gently sand over. Again, this isn't about how to sand a Spitfire blade, this is about how to fill a joint. So you can see now that I filled that. And it's relatively smooth okay I can't feel any steps in it but what I'll do is I spray a coat of primer on there and it will show me if it's shrinking back it will probably shrink back and leave a line but that's okay we could just put some more on or put some mr. surfacer on or give it a heavy coat of primer and then sand it and that'll be that done so that's that join there sorted out now this one here this is the um, <clears throat> the Mr. Hobby Putty I was talking about and as I said it's it's kind of gone off but it kind of feels like it's I don't know it's just it, that's like a hard that's like sanding down oh I can't think of the difference this is almost like a like I said it's like a nylon it's sort of soft it's almost like the difference between steel and hard rubber it's um it's really weird Say that's like a piece of dry wood and this is like damp wood. You know, you're trying to cut it, it's all dragging. I can feel the, the I can feel the sanding stick dragging through it. It's kind of I mean it's had like three hours and it's just not it's not dry. I much prefer the Tamiya. But as you can see again, I'm sanding it, and the whole object of this video is to show you the effect of sanding these fillers. And what that's doing is it's filling the joint okay and it's leaving it nice and level we've got a smooth surface the line has pretty much disappeared we've got a smooth surface so that's good and as you can see again that panel was higher so I've sanded it out and I've sanded it until the filler is only showing me a line got no um I've got no you know like here you can see that the filler is to the left of the line so I need to sand that away okay and then go around the corner but it's yeah it's it's horrible stuff I really don't like it you know, if I'm gonna use a filler I'll use the tabby one every time or as you've seen me if you watch my videos I often use car body filler as well which is good, really good, because it dries really fast, it dries really hard, and it doesn't shrink like this stuff does. So that's that one. Now the next one was the super glue, wasn't it? We did the super glue next. So again, I'm going to use the same stick. I'm not changing tools at all. And if you look on here, I should be able to show you. There you go. You can see, if you look close up, you can see how it shrunk back. So the super glue has been pulled into the joint while it's setting. So 
So as I'm sanding it, I'm removing the step. You can see here we've got plastic above the line and super glue below. So I'm going to keep sanding until it all feathers out into one. There, fix. I've got this really nice to make that panel slightly higher. It makes it much easier to deal with. If it was lower, you'd be filling over the whole thing or sanding the whole blade to blend it in. But, um, as I say, this is not about Spitfire propeller blades. This is about filling joints. And I can feel, I very much doubt you'll be able to see it, but I can feel there's a step there still where it's sunk. So I'd have to put another lot on, let it go. One way of avoiding that is to spray the accelerator on there and then it will dry hard on the surface, but then it's much harder to sand. So there you go. So that's the super glue. And then here is the Mr. Surfacer. Now this stuff is super good at blocking up your sanding sticks. That's, that's the only downfall I find Mr. Surfacer. So you can see here sanding away just like we did on the first one with the filler. And we've got the backs coming out, the back edge is coming out level. That's all good. There we go. So that's that done. Now, the biggest problem with this, I can still feel a step. It shrunk back just like the super glue has. And it will continue to shrink for another day or so because that's what happens. So that's one of the downsides and that's why I've started now using super glue because basically you do something like this here. Oops. Like a big area like this here, these ejector pin marks, and you sand them are lovely and smooth and you come back the next day and there's a mark there again. It's even more annoying when you see it after you've painted it. You think everything's great. It's on a, the wall of a cockpit or something right in, you know, right in your face. And you sand it. You think it's lovely and smooth. And then when you paint it, you come back a day later and it shrunk. And that is why I said, like, with fuselage and stuff like this, with seams like this, leave it as long as you can before you start worrying about sanding it and stuff. Because if you do it, like, straight away with anything other than super glue, it's all going to shrink back. So um, there you go. Apparently, Ammo have come out with a, like, a type of Mr. Surfacer that they claim doesn't shrink. Now, uh, I don't know how to say this. I haven't got any, I haven't tried it, but one of my viewers messaged me and said that I probably wouldn't like it. Let's put it that way. This is a sanding sponge, a skinny sponge. We can use this to get rid of the sanding marks from that. Okay, so you can see you've got a nice smooth surface. So I'm going to let that dry for a couple of days and then I'll go over it with some super glue. I'll probably go over all of them with super glue and then let that go off and sand them back. So that's basically sanding panels to, to how to fill a joint and sand it all flat when you want it all flat. Same on here, we can come along with our skinny set, get in there, sand that all nicely. Okay, and you can see in there there's a sprue nib. There we go, we sanded that joint out and that's been done with Mr. Surfacer. Same on the other side. Just sand it over there. Yes, guys, I still have a bloody cough. Okay, so there you go. So that's that. Now, in areas like this, you can see on here we have a seam. Okay, but fair, not fairly close, about three millimeters away from the seam, we have a line of rivets. And I don't want to sand them away. So what I could do is use the process that I'm going to show you now on this and use some uh, Mr. Leveling thinners. Um, but then the trouble is we'll have a seam. So what we want to do is be able to sand that but not sand the rivets. So what I do, I take some masking tape. Take, take some masking tape. Put it over the rivets. As close as you can to the edge. Give yourself as much area to sand as you can. Okay, push that tape down. Two layers should be enough. Okay, so put that over there and then we can come along with our sanding stick and we can work on that seam and sand it away. OK, 
okay and then along here just go along and the masking tape is stopping the sander touching the rivets now if I go hacking over the sand over the masking tape it's obviously going to sand through but there we go we've done that on there with no problem whatsoever and we still need to do some more and there we go we've sanded out that seam and we haven't touched our rivets at all we can do the same now on the other side so I'll use the other edge of the tape because it's untouched. So cover those rivets up just like so. But now you can see on this side we've got like a filler neck or something or a pipe union. So I've got to be careful not to touch that as well. So I've got to not only avoid the rivets, I've also got to Just looking on this side, no it doesn't. I thought the rivets, the rivets don't come up the side. I thought they did. It looks like they might have done on that side. So, just stay at 45 degrees. Take the edge of the sander into there. Into the corner of that seam. And then just sand away. The corner of that filler, should I say. Same here, just sand away. Just like so and then along with that tape on there you're not going to touch your rivets you know you're going to be mess messing with them I'm just going to take this coarser stick to remove some of that filler that's around there because it's quite thick and then with the sponge just polish up around there you can also use these beautiful infinity sponges there's a 1000 grit and just sand away and that won't hurt anything And there we go, there's our seam sanded. We do a bit more work around there, just in, in close on the top of that filler. But um, you get the idea. So we, you can see the seam there, the vista surface of the line, and then below it is the rivets, and the rivets are untouched. Now, I actually added this end plate while we were off camera, because I can show you on this one as well, if you want to retain the detail. So... All this sanding everything flat is great, but how can I get that joint, that plate goes in the end. How can I get in there and remove the excess filler? And how can I get around here, where are we, here and remove the excess filler by sanding it? I can't get in those nooks and crannies, can I? So what I do, I take a cotton bud. These are the wooden stemmed cotton buds, so they're a lot harder than the normal Johnson Johnson type of the paper. Now I prefer these because they're harder, they're, they're, they don't all fall apart like the Johnson Johnson ones. So I'm just going to get some of this Mr. Leveling Thinners, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners, on the cotton bud. I'm just going to go over there and wet that area. Now you can use alcohol for this, IPA, but it takes longer. Because it's not as hot. Do not use rapid thinners for this, it attacks the plastic. And in no way ever use this. That is that is basically um, Tamiya Extra Thin. So don't use any of those. Don't use the Tamiya Airbrush Cleaner or all that stuff. And all I'm doing is just wiping over here with the cotton bud. And then I can flip over and use the other end. And what I'm doing is removing any Mr. Surfacer that's on the surface. Mr. Surfacer on the surface, funnily enough. Okay, but I'm leaving it in the joint. So, basically, if you're trying to get rid of seam lines around any detail work, like on an engine block or like on the side of a tank, you've built up a toolbox or a fuel tank and it goes on the side and there's loads of bolts and rivets and flanges and edges and all that, this is fantastic, especially for military stuff, where you don't you want to fill a crack, but you don't want to sand any detail away. So this works wonderfully. Like if you had a line of rivets and there was a, like on here, when the wingtip goes on, we've got a line of rivets there, we've got a line of rivets on the wingtip. So I'll just brush Mr. Surfacer in the joint, let it dry, and I rub over the cotton bud and I'll have the line there, the seam line, the panel line, it'll look just like that there. So yeah, there you've got the line with the rivets down either side. If you watch my Spitfire build, you'll see me do it. So um, 
There we go. And then on the end of this tank here, you see, I remember I wetted it. That was just to soften the Mr. Surfacer. And now we can brush over with the cotton bud and just remove the excess. You can twist it as well. It's still a bit wet in that corner because it's so thick. But if you leave this sort of 12 hours, it works much better than what I'm showing you here. But if you leave it too long, it becomes very, very difficult to get off. And I'm talking like if you leave it like four or five days, it becomes quite difficult to get off. And there we go. And there we are. So that's that. You can see now you've got, no, there's one little gap there because there's an air bubble in the Mr. Surfacer. And sometimes, there we go. And you can see on there, you've got a gapless joint and you haven't removed any of the detail. Now you can see down in here, if I point it out to you with a pin, you can see down in there, there's a, you may be able to just see it, there's a gap in there. And that's where there was an air bubble in the Mr. Servicer. Or you, sometimes when you're rubbing it, you can rub the excess off the cotton bud into the hole. But if you, if you do get that, just put another drop in there and then go over it again. The back here, obviously the back is flat, so the back is going to be sanded. Just like that. If you want to make sure you're getting something flat, it's generally best to just go in one direction, like so, rather than this. Because when you do this, you tend to be doing... I'm going to show you, you tend to be doing that, exaggerated, so it's best to just go in one direction and just remove the filler. So basically the rule of thumb is where you want the line to show, use um, levelling thinners. If you're trying to achieve a flat finish like on here, then sand it. It's as simple as that. And there we go, guys. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you, the last thing was the wing, wasn't it? So, if you can imagine, let's get all this out of the way. As I said earlier, if you can imagine this area here is like one of these gum bays where it's going to be visible. And we had like a gap running along there underneath that spar. So all we do, once again, get a cotton bud. Another tip I'll give new modellers. Don't ever, ever pick up a cotton bud off the bench that you've already used. Especially if you're doing this like with clear parts and stuff. Because if you've used this to soak up some super glue and you've got anything in the end of there that's rock hard, as soon as you touch the clear parts, you're going to scratch them. So always throw your cotton buds away using a new one. So all I'm doing <clears throat> with the cotton bud soaked in the level of thinners. It's just rubbing along there. And there we go. So you can see there we have left. We've left Mr. Surfacer in the corner. We have no gap. We haven't removed any detail. We've done no sanding. And that's it. Okay, and you can see there at the back where the gap got slightly wider here because it's sat up on there it's not sat on the wing you can see there's slightly more if you want to get in there really tight and rub it away some more you can and there we go and then where that ejector pin mark is there we just put some more in as easy as that and with this still wet from doing that side I can do this other side It doesn't need to be dripping wet, but you don't want it just damp. You want it sort of wet. As you can see, with it being quite dry, it's taking longer to do. But you get the idea. If I get the other end, get some fresh levelling thinners on there. Okay, so that is... As you can see, it's wet. 
You see it's wetting my finger. There we go. All done. There we are. Seam taken care of, invisible. When you paint it, it'll look gorgeous rather than having a gap there. So there we are, guys. Um, oh, I didn't show you this, did I? This one here, the header tank with this cor curved surface on it. Again, with the stick, with the sanding stick. And I want my... Notice I'm not going in with a um, sponge. I'm going in with a hard stick. This isn't ready yet. This is still too soft. But I'm going in with a hard stick. I'm going to get rid of that seam line at the same time. Just sand away. Following the contours of the object. So you can see here it's going to roll off on the side. I'm just sanding away the Mr. Surfacer. Just going into the corners. That's where these skinny sticks are brilliant. These are the flory skinny sticks, and unfortunately, I'm led to believe he's stopping making them. Um, and the only other ones I know of that are any good are worth having a UMP. In fact, Albion do some, but I haven't tried them yet. I've got them over there on the side. I must try them out. But they're very, very coarse. That's the trouble with those. And then with a sponge, just go over and you can see we've got still got some seam line showing there. You can see that you can see the Mr. Surfacer in the seam, but it's all nice and smooth. As I say, that's going to shrink back because it's too, it's not even hard yet. It's still soft. I can still scratch it off my fingernail. Look. So, um, there we go. So that's how you do your seams. But as I say, I would recommend if you can leave them for longer than this. If you're using the um, Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners on a cotton bud, leave it an hour and then go in and do it. It's, it's not a problem. You don't need lots of time. But um, that's basically that, my friends. So hope you got something from that, especially if you're new to the hobby. Any questions, stick them down below. And uh, I will answer them if I can, or other people will answer them for me. And um, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see another little specials video, you know, like on certain different aspects of modelling. Bye for now.